Hello. Welcome to the virtual Fairfield Museum. The museum is closed to the public right now, uh, but we are coming to you through virtual means, through videos and photos and stories, uh, so that you can continue to learn and uh, understand some things about the history of the town of Fairfield. My name is Walt Mattis. My title is Program and Volunteer Coordinator, which means that when we have programs, uh, when we are open to the public, that uh, my job is to make sure that we have docents and volunteers and help make sure that those programs run smoothly. Today, I am on the campus of Fairfield University, uh, which is, they've been very gracious to allow me to actually come onto the property today. Normally when we, I shoot these segments, I am actually standing on a sidewalk with the idea that as you're walking around Fairfield uh, or traveling through Fairfield, that you pass locations with wonderful histories and, and you give you a chance to think a little bit about those histories. Uh, unfortunately, where I'm Benson, uh, so that you can, uh, if you're walking up North Benson Road, see this particular structure. So the structure that I'm here to talk about today is a structure called Maylands. It was originally called Maylands. Today it's called McAuliffe Hall, and it's actually part of the Fairfield University campus. But it was originally constructed uh, for a gentleman by the name of O.G. Jennings. Uh, O.G. Jennings was a uh, uh, brother to Annie B. Jennings. He was actually born in New York City uh, in 1865, but his family, his father, has very strong connections here to Fairfield, and OG will come here also. There was a, <coughs> excuse me, a structure here on site, but the that structure was taken down, and it would, it did belong to, to OG. It was taken down, and he has this structure built. Now, to put all this into a little bit of perspective. Uh, in 1896, uh, O.G. will marry, Oliver Gould Jennings will marry uh, Mary Dow's Brewster, uh, who's actually the daughter of a gentleman by the name of Benjamin Brewster. And Benjamin Brewster was actually uh, worked with, uh, co-owned a business with uh, Oliver Burr Jennings, Oliver Gould uh, Jennings' father's uh, father, uh, when he was in San Francisco. So their dads actually knew each other. Um, and so they get married in 1896. Now, at that time, uh, oh, Oliver Gould Jennings uh, is doing very well. Uh, he has actually just recently built a structure in New York City in 1898 uh, called today. It still stands. It's called the Oliver Gould Jennings House, uh, and it's on at 7 East. Uh, 72nd Street, so it's just off of Central Park on the Upper uh, East Side of, New of Manhattan. Um, so yes, he was doing very well. Uh, he uh, was on the board of directors of Standard Oil, uh, he, uh, Bethlehem Steel, he, McKesson and Robbins at one point, uh, National Fuel Gas uh, Company, as well as many others in the late 19th and early uh, 20th century. Um, so he has this structure built in 1906, and this is a summer home. It's built in a French chateau style. It had 40 rooms. Uh, and what we're actually looking at is the back of the structure. And the big difference in the structure today versus images that we have when Oliver Gould and Mary, Bru uh, uh, Mary Jennings, Mary Brewster Jennings, live here is there was an actual curved veranda that actually came off the back of the structure. Uh, and so that is no longer on the structure. But what we are actually looking up is the back lawn of the uh, of Maylands. And what you have to understand is that from the other side, so we are on, we are on the rise of Osborne Hill at this point. Uh, and so from here, you would be able to basically see straight out over Long Island Sound. So it must have been a truly magnificent view when they were out on what would be basically their back porch. Um, the front is actually obviously on the other side, and it would be accessible by a separate entrance slightly farther up North Benson Road. Um, Oliver Gould had a greenhouse, uh, very sizable, 
uh, greenhouse. Uh, we have images in our collection of it. Uh, it's it's enormous actually <laughs> when you think of greenhouses. Um, they also had marble uh, uh, statuary and uh, walking park and areas that were all on what would be the front side of the house. Water was actually brought to the house by a windmill that stood uh, about, a, about 75 yards from the structure itself and that actually pumped water up to a cistern that today the houses that are on uh, Malin's uh, Court, that area, that was actually a very large cistern. So the water would be pumped up, fill that, and then would be brought into the house to be used uh, however they need it within the house. Uh, um, OG and Mary will have two sons, uh, Benjamin Brewster Jennings and Lawrence Kirtland Jennings. Uh, and when OG dies in 1936, he will actually leave the bulk of the property uh, and the house to Benjamin, who will continue to use it as a summer home. Uh, but he, the portion that is left to Lawrence, the portion of the property, Lawrence will eventually build another large home, uh, not as large as this, but another large home um, that he will name um, Larrabee, Larrabee. And today that is actually um, Dolan, uh, part of Dolan Hall and, and, and that section. Uh, so that's, that structure is there. So eventually, uh, Benjamin uh, Jennings uh, no longer wishes to, to, to uh, is, is no longer here, and his estate is ready to sell it off. And it actually is purchased by the um, Society of Jesus, which is the Jesuits, uh, who buy the property. They were looking to start a, a preparatory school as well as a college here in southwestern Connecticut. They pay approximately $44,000 for the 76 acres, which are contiguous actually also with Walt, the property of Walter Lasher. Now he also has built a very large home um, called Hearthstone Hall. He builds that in 1921. Uh, and uh, it is today, once again, part of the Fairfield University uh, campus, and it's Bellarmine. The structure that is known as Bellarmine today was actually his uh, home and um, the property around it. So in uh, 1942, Fairfield Prep will actually uh, begin using the structure, McAuliffe Hall by that point, uh, as their campus. It's, it's their school, and they will, uh, in 1945, Fairfield University is chartered by the state of Connecticut. In 1947, the first 303 students uh, enter the College of Arts and um, Liberal uh, Sciences. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So they, and then over time, they begin to build on the campus. Uh, they begin to add uh, other structures. In 1968, they add the uh, Nasilius uh, Library. In 1971, the Bannon Science Center. Uh, the, in 1970, they add a nursing school. Uh, in 1978, the School of Business, uh, actually, which today is the Dolan School of Business, actually separates from the, uh, school, uh, the, the uh, uh, College of Arts and Sciences and becomes its own uh, college uh, or school. Uh, and then in 1994, they, all, they opened their School of Engineering, which is actually formed by acquiring the Bridgeport Engineering Institute. Uh, which actually also functioned in this structure for, for a period. Uh, so it has this wonderful rich history here with Fairfield University. Um, Fairfield University has long been part of uh, many of the happenings here in the Fairfield uh, Bridgeport area. Uh, their students here in the uh, 1960s uh, aware of issues that were happening around the country, uh, in particular with uh, uh, racial issues and other things. Uh, in 1960, there is a group of students who take it upon themselves to uh, picket some of the local branches of companies that also had branches in the South. Uh, in particular, uh, there was a Woolworths here in Fairfield Grants 
Uh, they uh, pick it there because these locations uh, in the South uh, were discriminating uh, against uh, African Americans. They weren't able to to sit at the counters. There had been a sit-in in North Carolina. And so the students here felt that it was important to say something about this and to be part of that. So they actually uh, had a, a protest, a picket, uh, outside of, of some of these businesses here in town. Uh, it wasn't so much to, to really stop people from going in as to help raise awareness of this situation and, and that you know this was going on. Uh, there was uh, also in 1962, William F. Bulkley uh, and uh, Father Connelly uh, had a Connelly uh, had a there was a forum, a debate uh, over integration of schools uh, here on the campus. So there was a discussion um, about you know the, the the issues that were involved with that. Uh, in 1965, uh, there was a group of students from Fairfield University that was part of a uh, protest march that actually happened in Bridgeport. They marched down Main Street in Bridgeport, uh, and they were uh, speaking out against cuts that were being made to the uh, education budget, which was already very low. Uh, and the concern was that, that minority students in particular were suffering under these changes and, and budget cuts that uh, were you know, chain, you know, not allowing for certain things to be done in the schools and uh, students from Fairfield University were participating in that. Um, the 1960s as a whole, there were actually uh, protests, if you will, and gatherings, both pro and against uh, the Vietnam War. Uh, the, so that just like the rest of the country, there was, you know, division even here amongst the students about whether or not uh, the, the war, uh, the involvement in, in Vietnam was, was appropriate. Um, in 1967, there is actually a forum that's held here at the campus. Now remember what I said, that originally it's an all-male campus. Uh, and in 1967, there's a forum where there's actually a, a discussion about becoming co-ed. You know, should the, 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 the consensus was that they were trying to, that should be co-ed school. And this indeed worked because in 1970, in the fall of 1970, Fairfield University will accept its first uh, female students here on, on campus. Um, so, but they continued to have a role in, in issues uh, that were affecting people uh, both here on campus and around uh, the area and in the country and in the world uh, all the way for all sorts of things to raise awareness about homelessness minority wages uh, the effect of uh, the effect of on lives of the uh, Iraq war uh, as well as the Black Lives Matter movement so Fairfield University uh, long been part of the Fairfield community uh, and a, a great uh, presence here in town. Uh, so, and once again, you know, my many thanks to them for allowing me to be able to come here to bring this program to you. I hope that you enjoyed. Uh, if you have uh, support, we uh, we you know happy with support. You can become a member of, of the museum. Donations are, oh, we always are very, very thankful for donations. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to visit our website, fairfieldhistory.org. Uh, and then you can uh, check out other programs that we're doing. Like I said, help out if you want, or if you have any questions to, to, to you know, send them to us and let us know. So we greatly appreciate it. So. Thank you so very much. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, once again, my name is Walt Mattis, and I hope to see you on the History Trail.